In this video, we learn about self inverse functions. And in a couple of minutes, I'm going to be working through the example we see here, in which we're told to show that the function defined as f of x, which equals to 2x plus 3 over x minus 2, is a self inverse function. But before solving this example, let me spend a minute or so to actually explain what a self inverse function is. And I'll do that on the right hand side here. We say that a function f of x is a self inverse function if it's equal to its own inverse. In other words, with self inverse functions, when we try and find the function's inverse, we'll find that it's equal to the function we started off with. And that's what a self inverse function is. And a typical example of a self inverse function could be the function f of x, which equals to one over x. Indeed, if we try and find this function's inverse, we're going to find that it's equal to one over x. And in fact, let's actually show that. Remember, the first step for finding a function's inverse is to start from y equals to one over x, and to rearrange this to make x the subject. And to do that, since x is dividing this one on the right hand side, I'll multiply both sides of this equation by x, which leads us to x y equals to one. Now, Remember, I want to make x the subject, so I need to get rid of this y that's multiplying x. And to do that, I divide both sides by y. And that leads us to x equals to 1 over y. And that's the first step done. We've just made x the subject. I move on to step 2, and in step 2, I swap the x and the y, and I define the inverse function. And so if I do that, swapping x and y leads us to y equals to 1 over x, and therefore the inverse function is inverse of f, which equals to one over x. And we're done. We have found this function's inverse. And comparing it to the original function we started off with, it's quite clear. These two functions are equal. And we say that f of x is a self inverse function. And there are other self inverse functions. Another example could be f of x, which equals to x. You can go ahead and try for yourself. But if you try and find this function's inverse, you'll find inverse of f equals to x. Graphically, we can recognize self inverse functions from the fact that they are the mirror images of themselves across the line y equals to x. And let me illustrate that for this function here. If I draw an x y grid, so something looking like this, the line y equals to x bisects the first and the third quadrant like this. That's y equals to x. And any self inverse function is the mirror image of itself across that line. So for the function f of x equals to one over x, that's the curve y equals to one over x, which would look something like this. And we notice that this curve is the mirror image of itself across this line. In other words, if I could fold the screen along this orange line, then this portion of the curve would overlap with this one. And this portion of the curve would overlap with this one. Of course, for that to be perfectly true, I would have to draw this curve to scale, but hopefully you get the idea. Finally, before I work through this example, one more important thing needs to be said. Given a self inverse function, the following will always be true. The composite of f with itself, so f of f of x, will equal to x. Another way of writing that is that the composite of f with f of x is equal to i d of x. That's known as the identity function. And I'll go ahead and box that result. Do make a note of it. This result is often used in exams to show that a function is a self inverse function. And if ever you haven't seen i d of x before, let me clarify what that function is with a few examples. Say I have to calculate i d of three. Well, i d of three is just equal to three. Or say I have to calculate i d of zero. Well, that's just equal to zero. Or even ID of negative 50. Well, that's just equal to negative 50. In other words, the ID function, ID of X, is just equal to X, which is why you may come across either one of these two notations here. Okay, now all that being said, let's go ahead and work through this example. Remember, we have to show that the function F of X, which equals to two X plus three over X minus two is a self inverse function. And there are a couple of ways to do that. The first of which is to actually find this function's inverse. And if we find that it's equal to the function we started off with, then it's a self inverse function. The second way to show that a function is a self inverse function is to use the result we have down here and to find an expression for the composite of f with itself. And if it is a self inverse function, we should find that it's just equal to x. 
but I'll do that in a couple of minutes. First, let me find this function's inverse. Remember, I do that in two steps. The first step, I start from y equals to 2x plus 3 over x minus 2, and I rearrange this to make x the subject. For that, the first thing I'll do here is get rid of this denominator x minus 2, and I do so by multiplying both sides by x minus 2. So that would be y times x minus 2 equals 2, the right hand side times x minus 2, which would just leave us with 2x plus 3. So we have 2x plus 3 here. Next, I distribute this y across this pair of parentheses, leading us to y times x, or xy, minus y times 2, or 2y. That's equal to 2x plus 3. Remember, I'm trying to make x the subject here, so I'm going to get rid of this 2y that's being subtracted from the left-hand side, and I do so by adding 2y to both sides. That leads to xy equals to 2x plus 2y plus 3, and now I need to bring this 2x to the left-hand side of this equation, and I do so by subtracting 2x from both sides. And so we have xy minus 2x equals to 2y plus 3. We're nearly there. Now to make x the subject, what I need to do on the left-hand side is place x as a factor to the entire left-hand side. And that would be x times, in parentheses, y minus 2, which equals to 2y plus 3. Finally, I divide both sides by y minus 2, which turns this into x equals to 2y plus 3 over y minus 2. And that's the first step done we've just made x the subject. I move on to step two, and in step two, remember, I swap the x and the y, and I define my inverse function. So swapping x and y in this expression leads to y equals to 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. And so finally, the inverse function, inverse of f, is equal to 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. And we're done we've just found this function's inverse. And looking at this and comparing it to the function we started off with, we can see right away that inverse of f is equal to f of x. Indeed, I can go ahead and write inverse of f equals to f of x, which tells us that we're dealing with a self-inverse function. Done. As I said earlier on, another way of showing that this function is indeed a self-inverse function is to use the result we have down here. That is, to find the composite of f with itself and show that it's equal to x, or show that it's equal to the id function. Now to do that, I'm going to need quite a bit of space because there'll be a lot of algebra involved. So let me just shrink all of this down, like so. And now at the top of the page here, I'll write method, method two. And the whole idea is to show that the composite of f with itself is just equal to x. So remember, our function is f of x shown here. It's 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. Okay, so we know that f of x, if I just copy that again, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. And if I look for the composite of this function with itself, so f of f of x, that's equal to 2 times f of x plus 3 over f of x minus 2. Now, replacing both of these f of x's by this entire expression, this turns into 2 times 2x plus 3 over x minus 2 plus 3, all of which is written over 2x plus 3 over x minus 2 minus 2. Now the trick is to write 3 over x minus 2 as well as 2 over x minus 2. And here's the idea. This expression at the top here can be written as 2 times, in parentheses, 2x plus 3, plus 3 times this denominator x minus 2. So that's 3 times x minus 2, all of which is written over x minus 2. And all of that is over 2x plus 3 over x minus 2 minus 2. And this can be rewritten as 2x plus 3 minus 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. Now I'm going to take care of this numerator as well as this numerator and tidy them up as much as I can. So let's see, at the top here we'll have 2 times 2x plus 2 times 3, and we add to that 3 times x minus 3 times 2. So that's 2 times 2x, which is 4x, 
plus 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 3 times x minus 3 times 2, so that's 3x minus 6. All of that's written over x minus 2, and all of that is written over 2x plus 3, so that's 2x plus 3, minus 2 times x, so that's minus 2x, minus 2 times 2. And because we're subtracting that, that turns into a plus 2 times 2, so that's plus 4. And that's written over x minus 2. I'll carry on up here. And now this numerator at the top here turns into 4x plus 3x, so that's 7x, plus 6 minus 6, so that's 0. And that's 7x over x minus 2. And all of that's over 2x minus 2x, which is 0, plus 3 plus 4, so that's 7. So I have 7 there. And all of that's written over x minus 2. Now remembering that a over b over c over d is equal to a over b times d over c, I can rewrite this entire expression as 7x over x minus 2 times x minus 2 over 7. Looking at this, we can see that the x minus 2s cancel each other out, so I'll just cross them out here, x minus 2 and x minus 2, and I'm now left with 7x over 7. Finally, cancelling out these two 7s, we find that that's equal to x, and we're done. We've just shown that the composite of f with itself is equal to x, and that tells us that f is a self-inverse function. Now I'm sure you'll agree that showing that f is a self-inverse function this way takes a lot more time and effort than the first method I used. Remember, all I did here was find the expression for the inverse function of f, and I showed that it was equal to f of x. Nevertheless, it is worth knowing about this second method because it could be required in an exam question. And there we go. We now know what self-inverse functions are, and we've worked through an exam-style question in which we had to show that a function was a self-inverse function. And that's it for this tutorial.